Hello and welcome to another episode of the Live, Love and Eat show. Now our special guest today is Guan Mylon. He's a holistic vitality coach with a background in fitness who has over a decade of experience working closely one-on-one -on -one with individuals and believes it's time for a new and integrative approach to assessing our divine health, which is through addressing both the body and the soul. He's seen how the health field neglects to address the soul and how the mindset and spirituality fields neglect the body and how all of these neglect to address our emotions. This often leaves people feeling like they aren't good enough or broken and that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, he's the creator of the RISE method, which brings the foundations of the soul the uh, physics, emotions and body together to guide his clients into experiencing incredible results in a short period of time, even when they couldn't get results from their doctors or therapists. He's a certified health and wellness coach, nutrition coach and a movement coach and a consistently humble dad of two. His company is named Thrive 212. Welcome, Juan. It's so nice to have you today. Um, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, your story? Because we all have a story. And just how did you get started in your career? Yeah, no problem. Uh, well, first, I want to say thank you for having me on the platform. And it's just um, an honor to be here and always good to, to talk and connect. Uh, like we talked about before, um, it's good to connect in real life and, and not just through through um, email or through paper pictures in 2, 2D. Uh, so a little bit about my my story and where where I'm coming from and why I'm doing what I'm doing is, let's see, where should, should we start? I'm, I'm from New York, you know, uh, the, the state of New York and um, raised upstate, didn't grow up with, with much money, you know, and um, single parent, uh, mom took care of me and my sister, you know, so there was a lot of there was a lot of I later on down in life I I understood that there was a lot of internal psychological things based on my environment and based on you know some of the hardships that that we went through and you know we we didn't have we didn't have a lot but we had the foundation of uh, love you know and um, my mother immigrated here from Dominican Republic so first first generation born here. Um, but I also saw the the effects of depression from firsthand because my my mother struggled with it as we were growing up and led to us being homeless on on a couple of different occasions. So it was there was some lessons there, and one one of the things was that oh okay, if you don't take care of this thing in between your ears, right? If you don't take care of your your mental state, then it's it's a wrap. You can't take care of anything, right? You can't you can't take care of yourself. You can't take care of the people you say that you love, and it was it was a it was a rough time, and it and it definitely strained the relationship between how I felt between myself and my mother. Because as a young as a young kid, you know you you interpret the world differently, and it has a ripple effect. So that I think subconsciously drew me to focused more on like the, the mindset aspect of things and the behavioral aspect of things. But um, I went, it, I was I was an athlete all my life, played, um, played sports, basketball in college, and went right into fitness, um, personal training, nutrition coach, putting things all, all together, you know, that, that realm. And um, what I seen was that it was missing a lot of gaps in, in the human condition, you know, the, the, the health, the, the true health, as I like to call it, is more than just eating and exercise. And that's really what's what's painted. That if you want to get healthy, go start working out. And um, it's there's a there's a lot of the conversation that's left out. And when I seen that, being in the field and being being, you know, having the success as a trainer and being the top trainer where I was, and having that success, that that, that monetary success that I didn't think I was ever gonna have. Right, coming from this, coming from my background, and you know, I, I was—I guess you could say—I was successful, but I wasn't fulfilled. There was something missing, and it showed me where um, 
I could bring more to the world. And I wanted to learn more. And I started learning more about behavior sciences, neuroscience. And um, that came about, pushed forward through an injury that took away my ability to walk. And I, I got more into, to, into my head because I couldn't use my body. You know, when, when you have an idea and you don't follow through with it, because I was caught up in a cat, um, rat race, life is going to throw you trauma and it's going to steer you in that way. So that injury, that debilitating injury was the beginning of what is now Thrive 212. So putting the pieces together of all these elements that I, that I feel is being missed in these, in these fields and areas, um, that's what I saw. So I wanted to see people transform and, and succeed in a way where uh, an all holistic approach was available to them and they don't have to get 15 different coaches for these 15 different areas, you know? Um, so that's a little bit of my, my story. I love that. And I love that you, you mentioned that, you know, this, <laughs> um you know um working on not just i mean you can tell somebody um that's unhealthy you know go to the gym for two hours or eat this eat that but if you didn't work on your inner self you know here your head um you know you're not really going to see changes um you know you're gonna you're gonna fall back into that old habits again you know you you're going you're going to go back where you started and i just feel like you know it's like you're running on a hamster wheel um you're not working you're not targeting the area that really needs um you know um progress or um you know so i love that you mentioned that um you know working on what's in here you know um can you tell us a little bit about you know um most of us or most people go through trauma um through their lives um and i believe that some people just don't like um they don't work through their trauma um how how do you like you know if somebody comes to you with trauma uh, how do you work with somebody like that um that's a good question trauma is a little tricky because uh it's yeah. it's very individualized and there's there's a lot of people that feel like they don't have any trauma because they haven't had it as bad as someone else you know and that's a big, that's a big hang because we all have it. We have all have some form of, of trauma. And what you can say is that it shows itself in some of those, some of these things in terms of whether we're trying to uh, diet or exercise, or we're trying to uh, a new program or trying personal growth. And we see, we, we find ourselves in this hamster wheel mm -hmm. and it has to do with uh, our identity when we talk about the, the unconscious, the subconscious. And that's what many, many people don't understand when we're trying to move towards something where their experiences is, is absolutely crucial. And this is one of the things where a lot of programs feel don't honor the story of who someone is. So I always look at the, the nature, honoring nature, right? That it's natural law, you can't go against it. Try to go against gravity, you're gonna get crushed, right? We sleep in, we sleep during the night, wake in the day, natural cycle. If you di disrupt that, not not so nice things are going to happen. The next part is honoring our story. Everybody has a unique story, like you mentioned in the beginning mm -hmm. here, and we must honor that, you know, because why strategies usually don't work is because it's not aligned with that person's story or with that person's values or their their identity or their beliefs. You know, a lot of strategies go, a lot of things go straight to strategy. And that's one of the problems where we go to the, to the physical form and we don't go into understanding the energy, which is we talk about tying it back to that, to that trauma. And then I like to look at the strategies, AKA the science, right? And the science must, must honor one natural law, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's, that's given. And it must align with the person's story, you know? how does it how does it resonate with them how does it align with them so when we talk about uh, trauma we're trying to change 
a lot of people look at it as self-sabotage. Mm-hmm. And I like to, I posted this a little, a little bit ago where your self-sabotage, what you think is self-sabotage is actually your identity trying to save itself. You know? So if we are trying to be in a loving relationship and we, we want that amazing relationship that we, we, we know what we want, but you believe that you know, women can't be trusted or men can't be trusted or anybody can't can be trusted you're with, you know, um, yeah. or that you're not lovable. So what tends to happen is you start on this journey and you might fall flat on your face in the beginning, or maybe it goes, it goes pretty good, but then it always cools back down and things start to happen because it doesn't fit with your identity and your unconscious is always going to save you. It's never going to let anything get in the way of what, how you identify with yourself in a deep, in a deeper way. And so when we talk about the identity or the values, it's like, Hey, we want a great relationship, but your values and your belief system is in complete contrast with that relationship, right? Uh, we want to eat healthier or want to move more, but your beliefs and your values are in complete contrast with those things, with, with the actual goal, the intellectual goal that you're trying to achieve. Intellectually is there, right? We're smart enough to be like, yeah, yeah, I want this here. Yeah. But when we go to the body, when we go to the wisdom of the heart and we, and we go into that and we speak to it and, we, and, we're, and we're open to hearing it, we see some of the truths that are lying in there. And now we see like, oh, okay. How can I bring, how was I supposed to bring more money in if I thought that people with money are, are cruel mm. and don't have morals and are evil? I, I don't identify with that. Yeah. So therefore I'm not open to receive that. Likewise with love, likewise with health or whatever it might be. So it's, it's, it's funky in, in that way where we go deeper into that work and understand and align. And once we get the energy right, the form starts to come along so it's like what you say it's when we've had those experiences or trauma right when we think we're not lovable or we think that no one can be trusted there's hurt there there's a deceit that happened right there's emotions that weren't that weren't intended to at probably a very young age you know um so there goes lies that that trauma so it has to be if we're looking for if we're looking for profound change and sustainable change it must have a trauma aware approach to it because that energy comes first, then follows form, AKA the results. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, sometimes people don't realize that they, um, they went through trauma. Um, you know, they, and when you start working with them and it's like peeling the onion, you know, from the start and then they're like, Oh, okay this makes sense you know um i want to go back to um because this is just i love this self-beliefs um and i believe that what we believe you know we put out there it's like you say in your mind like um like for example i can't lose weight because um um i don't deserve losing weight you know, I'm never going to lose this weight, you know, and I think believe self beliefs is, oh my gosh, it's so powerful, you know, what you believe, you know, that's very, very powerful. Um, so, you know, um, tell me a little bit, I'm very curious about the rise method that you um, uh, created. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, yeah, it. <laughs> So the rise method came about for like years and years of, okay. you know, my, my head just exploding, trying, trying to make sense out of all these different, all these different areas that, that were just close to my heart, you know, and that I love studying. Um, so for anybody out there, maybe any coaches listening or anybody or any future entrepreneurs, or if you're just in, in your life and you have so many things that you feel passionate about, um, and it could feel overwhelming or it could feel like you're just pulling yourself apart. Um, there's a reason why you're drawn to these things, you know? So there's a reason I was drawn to, you know, um, physics and, you know, psychological well-being and behavior science and nutrition and all these things were so important to me. Um, spirituality, philosophy, all these things. 
So the, the rise method was a, it was a simple way to bring it all together. So we can have a, so we can have a path, you know, um, but also looking at natural law, you know, what is, what does, what does natural law tell us? You know, the hierarchy, one, we have a soul, mm -hmm. right? And everybody talks about this thing called a soul, right? And, and everybody believes, yeah, we have a soul. And yeah. is it important? Yes. But here's what we, here's what we don't see. Everyone talks about the soul and it being important, but we don't see it in the medical field. We don't see it in our doctors. Our doctors don't talk about the soul. Therapists don't talk about the soul, right? Nutritionists really talk about the soul. Trainers don't talk about the soul. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have all these fields that are trying to help you transform or get to the next level. And no, it's like no one's touching on this aspect that we all believe that we have that's so important called the soul. Yeah. So Rise starts with that, that, that aspect of it. And it's the vision, right? And I believe that your vision is an expression of your soul. Mm -hmm. No one taught you the vision that you're, that you're trying to achieve, right? You, would, you weren't indoctrinated with this, this thing. It's, there's a heartfelt aspect to that. And a lot with higher achievers, because if you're, you're, you're in the Rise program, it's a, it's a commitment and you're hungry, right? Um, so I tend to deal with a lot of high achievers and high achievers stay in their, in their heads a lot, mm -hmm. you know, but that's where all the, that's where all the noise is. Yeah. That's a, a big thing I, I like to tell them is, um, step out of your head and into your heart, you know, and there's, and there's something called the brain heart coherence, you know, where it's harmony, you know, when, when it's not coherent and it's all noise, it's dis-ease, you know, so, um, the rise starts with that, with that spirit aspect of it, which is your vision. And then we go into the, the neuroscience, more like the, the beliefs and what, where we look at the psycho cybernetic loop, right? Where, what are thoughts? Where do they come from? Why do we have this anxiety and uh, all this going on in our head? Like, what is it? I love to understand the, the root of things and break it apart and make it, make it easy to understand we have this body we have these thoughts we have these emotions and no one taught us said anything about any of these things mm -mm. you know that is so that it's so important and powerful for us to understand you know so the second part is under understanding your 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 thoughts um like i said the the psycho cybernetic loop because having a vision is is beautiful and it's ne necessary it's like your north star you know um mm -hmm. but the problem with the brain is that one the brain and the mind are two different things you know we talk about it simultaneously the brain is an organ the brain is part of your body look at it as the antenna for the mind but the brain doesn't follow a vision you yeah. know it's good to have but the brain doesn't follow a vision I can start training it to but it follows a belief like you talked about your self-image that belief so now we're in conflict right and you can you can tell whether you have this vision when you when you have the courage to express it and say, hey, this is this is what's calling to me. You know, now you start breaking the cycle through that courage. You know, the, the four chakra, the heart, coraje, corazón, courage comes from that, comes from that. Um, so get into the thought so we can we can identify what's not aligned um, and then start to align those things. And then the then we go into the emotions. The emotions is that energy, right? It's one of my favorite parts because I mean, we can set the vision, we can do all the mindset tricks and meditate to a blue and do the law of attraction, all those things. But when you step into the real world and the real world smacks you in the face mm -hmm. and you get triggered or things don't go your way. And we all, we all probably experience that, that person that does all the right things and meditates and does all these courses and, you know, something goes wrong in a restaurant or, you know, something goes wrong at the grocery store and they blow up. And you're just like, dude, what's, what, <laughs> what's going on? You know, that, that goes to show they, they haven't tapped into the, the, that emotional signature. I like to call it the, the energy signature, our emotions, energy, emotion. And that's where, where that transformation really occurs. That energy, how you, how you show up and how you receive the world, mm -hmm. you know, that transformation. It's a, it's a kind of a hard thing to grasp. So I like to bring it together, like what is transformation? And I look at transformation as you seeing the world differently, right? Change your perspective. That's belief aspect of things, what you believe, what you see, how you feel about yourself. 
and the other aspect of how you show up into the world. And they're both interrelated. But how you show up in the world, how you receive the world has to do more with your nervous system. You know, how, your, how, how you feel your state and being able to regulate that. That's the energetic thing. That's why you have trauma and being able to release that, being able to relinquish that is so, so important um, with that. And then the last part is the body. And this is where a lot of people focus on first, right? So you see how we went through the line. A lot of people go into the body and um, to energize the body. And there's three, there's four steps with that. There's the breathing, always looking at the hierarchy of nature, right? The first thing you need to do is breathe. You, that's the, that's, you can't go long without breathing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so we go into the, the breath work and we go into sleeping. You know, um, you can't go long without sleep um, with that. Then go, we go into nutrition. Then we go into movement. And so the, those are the four parts of energizing your body because your body is a part of your spirit. It's an expression of your spirit. It's an, for lack of a better term, instrument of your spirit, but it's an organic dynamic instrument of, of this. And why do we need health? We're just not going to be healthy just to be healthy, right? To just stand in the middle of the street and just be like this, right? We, we, we want health is our natural expression because we have a duty to do something and we can't do that without our health. So this, this body is your, your tool um, for your spirit's expression, for the duty that you're here to do. And this is why visionaries do really well in the, in the program, that hunger for that because they, they know kind of, hey, I want to get there. There's, like, there's some blocks and I need to understand that. Um, so that's the rise method. I with laugh that. I mean, I just laugh the whole concept because, you know, um, I feel that if we get everything in balance, not just your nutrition and your exercise, but your whole body, you know, and it's all balanced, you will see such amazing transformation mm -hmm. in yourself, you know. Um, um you know years back people used to say just go and exercise just eat the right foods you know and you will see a transformation um but yeah like i mentioned before you know it's not just like doing that and getting to that point where you feel like oh okay i feel amazing um, you know, you have to work on all those aspects. And I just love that. I, that is amazing. Um, so I want to ask you a question and um, what advice will you give to somebody out there that wants to get healthy? You know, somebody that's struggling and they're listening to this podcast and I think, okay, you know, how can I start? Where do I start? Can you give us some advice on that? Yeah, I always I always look look at the 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 rise method and go into into that. I use it myself, you know, when I find myself in a, in a hard space. But when you're looking to get in that those first steps that I want to be healthy, one is always always define what that means to you, right? Like um, success or whatever or a partner or what. Always is so crucial to define exactly what you're talking about because when you don't, there's always a neural association, and you say I want to get healthy. But we don't we're, we we don't have a connection to what that healthy looks like or feels like. Mm -hmm. So now, if you see an advertisement of healthy eating or this healthy healthy food here here, your your brain is gonna want to go to that because it has healthy. Mm -hmm. But if, when you get that definition of what health means to you, you now have a very specific specific picture and feeling that you're that you're after. Right, whether it's playing more with your kids on the floor, you know, crawling, um, whether it's not just not having pain, but also pain in your body, but also what you're doing. You know, um, I, I always want people to understand this. It's not just running away from something, it's running towards something. And so, yes, yes, we don't want pain. Of course, of course, we don't want pain in our body, but it's not about not having pain. It's like, we're not playing not to lose, we're playing to win. So what is it that you want to do? And um, getting, getting more familiar with that definition and that vision of what health looks like for you. And from there, reverse engineering it. So say I want to crawl more and play with my kids. You know, okay, what, so what do I need to do for that? Do I need the, the body, the stabilization of, of, of my core, you know, maybe sh shoulder, shoulder mobility 
and things of that nature. And now once you set that goal, you know, that vision, what I want you to do is just forget about the goal <laughs> and, make, and make the process your goal. Now, you know, whether it's like this week, I'm going to do this and this. And then don't overload, be compassionate with yourself. But the number one thing is define what health is. Yeah. Please define what health is. That way, no coach can tell you what you need to do, right? No guru can tell you what you need to do if you're out there reading things. It can be confusing. It's, con it's super confusing. But the more you're confused, the more stagnant you are, the, the more you're going to switch up and try a whole bunch of things, it's going to keep you just guessing and buying, right? So that's in the benefit of many of, let's just say it out, there's a lot of posers out there, right? So that's in the benefit to them. But when you define it for yourself and you sit down and your coach has, you know, the same goal you do, or you sit down with yourself like, hey, what does this mean? What does health need look like for me? Um, you have a much, much stronger con control and all, like authorship of your journey. I love that. Oh my gosh. Um, I just, um, you know, I believe this, like if you heal your inner self, you heal your body overall. Um, and you know, that's so true. It was such a pleasure to have you today on the podcast. Um, you are doing, oh my gosh, amazing work out there. Um, thank you for being on our, a guest on our show. Um, and yeah, keep your light shining out there and you know, you are changing a lot of people's lives. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I want to throw something out there because it's dear to my heart. Um, right now is a season. It's late, late November. I know it, it, it's a season and it could be a lot of um, people struggling with either anxiety or depression. And um, I do have a workshop coming up. It's no cost just to come in and have some of that, that information so you can so you can energize your body, mind, and, and spirit with that because, again, a lot of the, the fields are, are missing these different gaps. So I wanted to put it out there that people that are that are feeling stuck, um, yeah. that there's that there's a way out. And, and I've seen it all the time, and I see it a lot in my clients uh, once we get some of these things aligned. So I just wanted to throw that out there, shameless plug, um, with, with that. But thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank Something. you for mentioning that. And that's true. You know, um, holidays are coming up and, you know, it's a crazy time of year, if I can say that, you know. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll link um, all uh, Guan's, uh, you know, all his, his website and everything down there. And if you want to connect with him, you know, you can connect with him um, at his email or his website. And yes, it was such a pleasure to have you again today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you.